This video is sponsored by Movement Watches. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another exciting episode of History Kitchen. My name's Ian, and I am definitely the real Ian, not an imposter. Today we're gonna to be taking a step back in time and preparing a recipe from Betty Crocker's International Cookbook, originally published in 1980. In the last episode, I prepared a recipe that pretty clearly looked terrible from the get-go. There was not a big chance of me enjoying mayonnaise on a banana. Today we're doing something different. I'm gonna be cooking something that is a bit more complex and also looks like something that might actually be kinda good. Kind of. We're going to be preparing a stuffed rolled steak. A thin, flat cut of beef spread with a savory stuffing, then rolled, skewered, and braised produces an applause-winning main dish that is particularly easy to serve. It can be sliced, jelly roll fashion, and eaten hot or cold. The dish is popular throughout Latin America. In Argentina, it is called matambre, or hunger killer. The beef roll was originally prepared for travelers setting out on long journeys. Another difference from the previous episode, we cooked from a junior cookbook, so it was really more like basic assembly of five ingredients. This time we're actually gonna cook something and it's got a lot of ingredients. I'm not gonna list them all off, I'm just gonna start bringing them out. All right, I'm pretty sure these are all of our ingredients, a pretty healthy spread. Before we actually get to cooking though, I gotta do some prep work. I need to hard boil the egg, I need to chop some things up, uh, so let's get started. How do you hard boil an egg? I'm assuming you boil it. Let's go and let's chop some tomatoes. I've got two tomatoes here. I'm only gonna chop up one. I'm making a bit of a smaller stuffed rolled steak. I didn't, I don't need eight servings of this. I mean, just in case it's bad. You guys watch Veggie Tales? How do you think they feel about like cooking shows? Do the foods in Veggie Tales eat other foods? I don't remember. Do you think the veggies in Veggie Tales have different innards? than regular vegetables. Like they gotta have a voice box or something, right? <laughs> Chopped tomato, looking pretty good. I actually love tomato. Medium onion chopped. Taking some real personal restraint to not say chorped. I don't really know why, but I've daydreamed about doing like a, a chopped type video. Every time I envision it, I'm like, ah, if I do it, if I make a chopped type show, I'm gonna call it chorked. It's like a, a Coach Z kind of chopped show. Whatever it is, it just makes me keep reading chopped as chorked and I kind of hate it. How's my technique, cooking professionals? I'm a real chef. This is how you chorp. Ugh. I should have done the onion before I started. Oh my God. It's too much onion, man. I'm not gonna use this much onion. Here we have one fuck ton of chorped onions. I'm actually crying. So here's our carrot. Uh, I'm gonna peel it a bit and... Uh, is this what carrots always looked like? I haven't bought a carrot in forever. It looks like a freak carrot. When I think carrot, I think pajama Sam carrot, not, I don't know, this is like a weapon. You could take somebody out with this. Ah! Surely, I'm, you're, you're supposed to peel the outside of a carrot, right? You know, I used to be a huge Bugs Bunny fan as a kid. I had like a Bugs Bunny blanket. I watched Bugs Bunny all the time. Show got pretty deep, you know? There's a rabbit, you wanted carrots. Really makes you wonder, what was up? 
Uh, the recipe calls for canned chilies, and once again, I was not able to find anything in a can, and I don't know anything about chilies. Uh, I know red chili peppers. So today I've got one of these. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it sure does look like a green chili pepper to me. Chorped. There we go, we got some uh, chorped chilies. Okay, I think that's all the prep I gotta do until this egg is done. Egg's taking me a bit longer than I thought it would. But it's gonna be excellent. Are there any egg puns left in existence that haven't been done before? Probably not. Probably not. While we're waiting on this hard-boiled egg, I want to take the time to reiterate uh, once more that I am Ian, and I am not an imposter. There's, there's still more stuff we can do while I'm waiting on that egg. I don't exactly know why I'm waiting. Is it the same egg pun I just did? Let's take a minute to get to know the star of the show here, a beef round, top round steak, uh, whom I have named Jeremy. And since the beef roll was originally prepared for travelers setting out on long journeys, I think it's only appropriate that we subtitle this episode of History Kitchen, Jeremy's Journey. How do you feel about that, Jeremy? Wow, Ian, you know, I'm just so happy to be here. It was always my lifelong dream to be used on a cooking show, and now it's named after me? This is just amazing. Ow! What was that? Ow, my face! So step one is to flatten out the steak to about a fourth of an inch. Uh, because we gotta roll it up, so you gotta make it nice and flat. Anyone know how long a fourth of an inch is? Uh, tape measure is what professional chefs use to measure things. Needs to be flattened out a little bit more. Sorry, Jeremy. Alright, so we have sufficiently beaten our meat. Uh, what's next? We gotta salt it, oregano it, and pepper it. Now we gotta put some ham on there, and I'm actually kind of excited. I didn't realize at first that this recipe was going to include two different types of meat. So let's ham it up. I've got some boar's head smoked ham with natural juices. Oh. There. Sprinkle tomatoes, chilies, onion, garlic, and breadcrumbs. So it looks like you just take a bit of everything else and just make a layer. They include a picture on there. You know, we'll just try and get close. All right, it wanted me to chop some garlic, but I already have some chopped garlic here that maybe I can open. I love garlic. Can't have too much garlic, except for if you have too much garlic. I don't really see the point of the breadcrumbs. Probably good. Cut carrot lengthwise into halves. Cut halves lengthwise into three strips. Okay, well, my cutting board is preoccupied. I'm just gonna cut it on my counter and be very careful. It is surprisingly difficult to cut a carrot lengthwise. That's not... This is hard. This is the hardest part so far. Okay, we're, we're good. Chefs of YouTube, how do you cut a carrot lengthwise? Uh, let me know. These look a bit long though. Uh, how long are... Perfect. I think the next part is the egg. Let's go get an egg. Let's go get the egg. Going to get the egg. Excellent. Did I already say that? 
I know hard boiling an egg is like kitchen 101, but when you haven't done it in years and years, it's like, are you hard boiled? Is this how you peel an egg? How do you peel an egg? Oh, that's right. Check out that perfectly peeled egg. I guess I'm just gonna eat this other part. I like eggs. Need salt, which is probably why the next part of the recipe says add some salt. Okay, now comes the fun part. All the, uh, all the chilies and stuff are moving forward. Don't go away. Oh no, we lost. We lost some of the egg. Get back in there, egg. And there you have our little loaf here. It's pretty wild looking. I don't know, from the outside it just kind of looks like beef. Because I guess that is the outside. And then inside you got a little swirl, uh, swirl of stuff. Now this recipe calls uh, for a Dutch oven. I don't have a Dutch oven, but I do have a pot. I feel like cooking it in a pot is the same as a Dutch oven. I don't, I don't really know the difference. Man, the Ian cam is running out of batteries, uh, but I have this tiny not GoPro. It's like a imitation GoPro. All right, so first let's put some vegetable oil in the pan. So this is a couple tablespoons. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna measure it. Uh, is that two tablespoons? Is that too much? Is that too much? Is that too much? It says action camera on it. Do I look like I'm full of action now? Watch me cook. Watch me cook over here. Now I'm, now I'm cooking over here. Check out this action loaf. I'm like in a skater music video. All right, I will be back when the preheating has ceased. The preheating has ceased. Uh, and also welcome to over here. Uh, we're gonna cook some things. First things first, we gotta put uh, Jeremy in there. All right, so that's brown on all sides. It's brown on all sides. I feel like an hour and a half is a long time to leave it in the oven though. Get rid of that. Okay, now we're gonna put in water. That was a horrible idea. Was that supposed to happen? Maybe I should let that cool down. I feel like it wasn't supposed to do that. No big deal, we'll just uh, clean out this pot and then we'll be right back at it. Add water, vinegar. Do I have vinegar? I didn't know that I needed vinegar. Okay, so the recipe calls for vinegar. Uh, so if when I'm eating this, I go, man, it could really use some vinegar, uh, you know, that's my fault. Put some Worcestershire sauce in there. Worcester. May have been more than they asked for, but uh, man, I love me some Worcestershire, some Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Worcester. And one bay leaf. Bay leaf. Bay leaf. Cover and cook for an hour and a half. All right, so Jeremy's gonna cook in there for an hour, an hour and a half. I'm kind of worried that it's gonna overcook, but I also don't know how to check it. I don't know, uh, I'll be back when, I, when, when it's done, when Jeremy's done, I will be back. All right, everybody, it's time for the moment of truth, and I gotta say, it smells surprisingly good in here. This is not that surprising. It's beef, it's ham, some veggies, an egg, which I'm not sure about still. Oh man, it smells even better now that the oven's open. Oh, I hear ya. Ooh. Ooh. I did lose a little bit of the egg, but uh, I kind of thought that was gonna happen. That does not look half bad.
Now I'd assume normally you'd start with the ends, but I kind of want to cut right in the middle just to, I mean, I want to see what that roll looks like. Oh my God, that smells pretty good, man. I'm gonna put my face in the steam here. I think the meat might be a little, the beef may be a little bit overdone. It does look a bit dry. I left it in for the full hour and a half just because, you know. Serve on ourselves a little roll here. Oh man, I gotta get you guys a shot of this. Pretty stinking cool looking, if you ask me. All right, where's my fork? Hot. Beef is definitely dry. Definitely overdid the beef. Did not need to be in there an hour and a half. I really should have checked on it an hour in, but I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how, I didn't want to cut into it too early and ruin the awesome, you know, cut in there. But that's the big, that's the big flaw. Now it's just, oh. Ooh. I got a, a green pepper. Ooh. This is kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of cool. Mainly, it's a cool presentation. You're not putting in, you know, anything crazy in here. Surprisingly, I don't mind the egg. I would make, I would make something like this for people. I would put different fillings in. I think it'd be great with some mushrooms and maybe some potatoes. That's a pretty clever idea. Hmm. Not bad. You know, I picked, I picked this meal. Why do I have two forks? Why did I, why did I do that? I picked this meal mostly because of the picture included in the recipe. It looked bizarre and specifically the ham in there looked a bit odd, but I would honestly put even more ham in there next time. I would put an extra layer of ham on there, put some potatoes, leave the carrots, onions were fine. Really all the stuffing in there was probably fine. I'd probably take out the egg, it doesn't add too much. But put in some potatoes, put in some mushrooms, and actually cook it for the right amount of time. And that would have been great. I also think that uh, seasoning the outside of Jeremy here would have been helpful. I think, if I remember correctly, all the seasoning went on the inside. So I'd say I would rule this as our very first Brutal Foods History Kitchen success. We succeeded, we all together, all of us, even though I did everything, we all did it together somehow. If for whatever reason you end up doing your own uh, stuffed steak, you should send me a picture on Twitter or something and, and tell me how you liked it. Be sure to not overdo the meat. That's really the biggest thing. I've said it a, a few times. That's really the biggest drawback is it's, if you eat it, I mean, if you took a bite of this, you would go, oh my God, it's, it's just dry. But I think it's worth a shot. I think you could put a full, a full meal in there and you wouldn't even need to have any sides because it's all in there. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend. Let me know if you end up making one of these yourself. And I'm gonna get to uh, cleaning all this stuff up. Who are you? I'm Ian. No, you're not, I'm Ian. I'd like to take a second uh, to thank the sponsors of this video, Movement Watches. Uh, you, you might have noticed the watch I've been wearing through this episode. Uh, it, is a, it was a gift from Movement Watches. Movement Watches start at $95, and surprisingly to me, I actually had a little bit of trouble deciding which one I wanted them to send to me. I've got some pretty neat styles out there. I, th I think this one fit uh, my aesthetic pretty well. Most surprising to me is it fits on my Skeletor wrists without needing another hole punched through it like they usually do. Uh, they also sent me some sunglasses, so you can check me out right now. Hey, uh, it's so shady in here now. Shady in the good way. 
I normally wear an Apple watch, but since getting this in, I've been wearing this watch because this one doesn't bug me about emails every five seconds. I almost feel liberated wearing just a regular watch again. Tons of designs to choose from, quality construction, and styled minim minimalism. Minimalism. If you're looking to up your watch or sunglass game, uh, check out Movement. You can use uh, the link movement.com slash brutalmoose and get $15 off, free shipping, and free return. Join the movement. Join the movement.